Hi, my name is Kareem and I'm a product manager with Amazon QuickSight. And today I want to walk you through a new feature we launched, which is securing your dashboards using row level security that have namespaces. Let me walk you through the quick agenda. First, I will introduce to you what is Amazon QuickSight. Then I will talk to you about a particular use case where a customer who has multi-tenancy wants to restrict data based on the users that are accessing the dashboard from different customers. Then I want to show you a working example of accessing the dashboard without any row level security rules set up. And once those rules are set up, I want to show you how the access to the dashboard changes. So a quick introduction about what is Amazon QuickSight. Amazon QuickSight is a scalable, serverless, embeddable, ML-powered BI service built for the cloud that you can use to deliver easy to understand insights to the people who you work with, wherever they are. Now, to talk to you about the use case here, let's say that there is a customer, Octank, who has multi-tenancy setup for two customers of their own, and they are HR in Finn. Each of these customers has a user with the same name, test user A. Octank wants to make sure that they can secure data based on which user is accessing the dashboard. Now, with the existing row level security, we enable rules based on username. In this case, the username is same, which is test user A across both the customers HR and FIN. Hence, for Octane to be able to secure their data based on test user A from HR and based on test user A from FIN, they have to be able to set up row level security using the new RLS with tag with namespaces features. So before I get into that, I wanted to show you how you can initially set up your multi-tenancy, how you can register users and update a dashboard to be able to uh, be accessible by those users. So the first thing is you can create multi-tenancy by creating multiple namespaces. And for that, you can use the create namespace API. Once you create the namespace API, you can use the register user API to add users to each of these namespaces. And once you have added those users, what you can do is you can use the update dashboard permissions to grant access to these users to the dashboard. I have done each of this, so I'm going to show you quickly how I have, what namespaces I have created, what users I've registered, and the dashboard to which I've given permissions. Let me quickly show you that. So here I ran list namespaces on my account, and I see that I have created the fin namespace and the HR namespace on my account. Now I have added users to each of these namespaces using the register user API. And what I'm showing you is the list users to show the users that I have added. So when I do list users on my namespace HR, I see that I've added a username test user A. Similarly, when I do list users on namespace fin, I've added a username test user A. But these are two different users because they belong to two different namespaces and that is qualified using the user on where you can see for this particular user, the test user A is qualified by the namespace HR. And in this case, the test user A is qualified by namespace fin. Now, I have a dashboard called Sales Demo. And I, what I've done is I have created a table where I can see the weighted revenue by APAC, EMEA, US regions for segment startup, SMB, and enterprise. And I have given access to the two users I created in each of these namespaces to this particular dashboard. And let me sh quickly show you the access given. So I gave access using the update dashboard permissions API, but once I did it, when I run the describe dashboard permissions API on the dashboard ID, which is the same as the one that I showed you, you can see that I have given access to test user A under HR namespace and test user A under fin namespace. 
And each of these principles or users have actions which help them to describe the dashboard, list dashboard versions, and query dashboard. Now, once I have given the setup, I want to access this dashboard as if it is embedded by each of these users. And I have not set up any RRS rules on this particular dashboard or the data set that is powering this dashboard. And hence, each of these users will be able to access all the data on this dashboard. Let me show you that. So I just ran the get dashboard embed URL API for this dashboard as HR test user A. And I've also ran the get dashboard embed URL API for the same dashboard as user test user A under fin namespace. I have two different embed URLs. I'm going to embed both these URLs. And you can see that both these users can access the entire dashboard without any restrictions because there is no RLS rule setup. Here in these two tabs, I have rendered the embed URL this particular tab is showing for the user test user A under HR namespace. And this particular tab is showing the dashboard for the test user A under fin namespace. And as you can see, both of these users are able to access all the data across all regions and segments because there is no RLS setup. Now let me go and set up RLS and show you how this data gets restricted based on the RLS rules that I set up. So the RLS rules that I'm going to set up is going to be based on user on, not on username, because we need to qualify the user based on the namespace they are in, and hence we use user on. For test user A under HR namespace, I'm saying that they can only access data for region EMEA and segment enterprise SMB startup. Similarly, test user A under namespace fin can access data only for region US and just for enterprise. So this is the list of my data sets and the data set that is powering the dashboard is sales pipeline. And as you can see, it has no data set selected for your RLS rules. I have created RLS users using namespace data set. Let me quickly show you that particular data set. It is a two row data set, which is actually defining is the same as the rules that I talked about. It has user on, region, and segment. And I'm saying that test user A under HR namespace can access EMEA region for segment enterprise SMB and startup. And similarly, test user A under FIN namespace can access data under US and enterprise. So these are the two things that I'm actually setting up on this particular data set. And I'm going to add this particular data set as an RLS rule for my primary data set, sales. So I just applied the RLS rules, RLS users using namespaces as my RLS data set on my sales pipeline, as you can see here. Now, when I go and reload this particular dashboard as test user A for HR, I should see that they can only access EMEA for all three segments. And when I reload this particular data set, which is for test user A and FIN, they can access for region only US. Let me quickly go and show you that. So now because I've assigned RLS, you can see that test user A under HR can now access data only for EMEA, but across all three segments because that was the rule we set it for them. And let me reload this. And test user A under namespace fill can access the data only for region US only for enterprise segment. So as you can see this, that once we set up these rules, each of these users under the namespaces, even though their usernames are the same, but because now they are qualified using their namespaces, can access data only that is 
open for them, either just EMEA and these segments or US and enterprise segment. Please be aware that you have to use user on as one of your column headers and not username. Thank you for watching and hope this was a useful video. If you have any questions, please reach out to us at quicksightsales at amazon.com. Thank you and have a very nice day.